Hey guys, welcome back. This is Bernardo from the BJ Tech News, and this is part two of my deploying SSTP and VPN with Windows Server 2012. Uh, on this, guys, I'm going to show you got a. I'm going to show you how to configure the RRAS for the SSTP. Also, I'm going to show you how to grant a particular user uh, SSTP VPN access so they can have access to that. And um, before we start, I want to make uh, a note is I'm not running this on a behind a, a ultimate super duper firewall. So if you guys are running this for a testing environment at your job, make sure you have a strong or you have it behind a corporate firewall and make sure you put add the exception and rules for HTTPS and uh, TCP 443 uh, ultimately you should have a public IP address that resolves to a public name for example like VPN dot uh, BJN.com that would be mines but yours might change a little bit so you, you could just allow uh, users to access it with that public name okay so let's get started so the first thing that I am going to do is because I don't have a like a ultra you know like an ultra cool firewall so I'm gonna do a uh, Windows R and I'm gonna do a firewall CPL oh sorry spelled it wrong firewire <laughs> firewall CPL and I'm gonna open up my my firewall settings and I'm going to turn it off because again this is only testing and but most likely if this was a more production environment I gonna add the exception for this to go through the firewall okay so let's give one of my users access to get into um, our SSTP VPN so I have a Biarocho which is my name I'm gonna double click on it and I'm gonna go to Dowlin and to give access to someone you just allow access to network access permission and I'll apply okay so that's how you do it it's real simple so let's get into the configuration of the RRAS for SATP so what you want to do you want to get into your server manager go to manage manage add roles and features you're gonna hit next on this Hit next on this next and from here you want to go a network policy and access services Add all the features that it wants you to add. Add, hit next, and hit next and next. And you can leave this as is. Guys don't really need anything else. And hit next. And in, and I normally like to check this off, but it doesn't re it doesn't restart. But once it does complete, I'll say best practice just restart your machine. And hit yes and then install. Okay, so we're back <laughs> yeah so it's completed that's a good thing we're gonna close this up and what we're gonna do is we want to it says installation succeeded we're good uh, let's go to manage again and add roles and features and we're gonna go next and next next and what you want to do from this portion right here for the roles you want to add remote access now the reason that I didn't do everything in one shot is because I like to do everything individually and make sure everything is running perfect and installs perfect okay uh, add features and hit next and then from here you want to hit next again next and then make sure on this part right here the role services for the remote access you're gonna check remote um, routing uh, hit next on that out again always check the restart but it never restarts for me but whatever again best practice is when it does finish restart it and we're gonna hit install okay and the remote access row and features has installed which is a good thing but it gives you an option to open and get started you also get a nice little exclamation point right here to because you need to continue configuring now I'm not going to worry about that because the reason is I want to I want to try to at some point I want to show you guys how to do it manually so don't worry about that so what I want to do is we're going to I'm going to minimize the server manager and let's do a Windows R and MMC MMC stands for for Microsoft Management Console we're going to press OK on that and uh, let's expand this a little bigger we're going to go to file Add and remove sma snappings, <laughs> and uh, you want to go to certificates. Add, and from the certificate portion, you want to do a computer account, 
hit next. You want to do the local computer, hit finish. We're good to go. Press OK. Okay. Now from here, you want to go expand this, expand personal uh, personal node, go to certificate node, and from certificate node, you're going to right click, go to all tasks, and you want to request a new certificate. Okay. And from here, you're going to hit next. And from here, we want to hit next. And from here, the request certificate, remember the um, part one, we created this. So if you guys do not remember how we got this, at the very right there, at the very top of the video, you should get an annotation or a link to take you to part one. So check out part one so we, you could kind of follow along and know why, how, how we got this. So from here, you got a more information is required to enroll the certificate. Yes, we want to click on that link to get this. Now, on the subject name type, you want to change this into a common name. And the value would be the value that you want your users to, you know, log into your thing. So I'm going to do vpn.bjn, which is bjtechnews.com, add it. We're going to press OK. And as you can see, the warning has disappeared. We make sure that you check that um, SSCTP and you got to make sure that you check that certificate. And you want to click Enrolled. And all good to go. Want to hit the details. Everything is good. Remember, I'm doing everything self signed. It's a self signed certificate. So if you guys have your own certificate, that's a little bit more of a different procedure. Uh, we're going to hit Finish. And then from the finish, we want to do a Windows R, and then we want to type in M uh, R R A S manage M C M M S C. I'm going to hit enter because we need to configure our routing and remote access. Okay, cool. And from here, we want to right click on the on your server node. And we want to configure and enable remote access, routing and access. Remote, blah, blah. Oh man, routing and remote access, which is R A R S. Right? Yeah. No. 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 Okay. So, uh, yeah, R R A S, which is routing remote ac uh, access server. <laughs> uh, going blank there for a while. Uh, we're gonna hit next on that, and we're gonna hit next on this, and make sure that you do VPN and hit next. And then from here, uh, uncheck enable security on the selected interface by selecting up a static. Uh, just uncheck this. We don't really need that. Uh, make sure you select the first Ethernet. And we're going to hit next. And from this portion right here, the IP address assignment, uh, I'm going to do from a specific range of addresses. Okay. And we're going to hit next because I want to assign the IP addresses to my users. So I'm going to hit new. And let's assign some IP addresses to our users. So I'm going to do it. Uh, these are the numbers that I want my users to get. And I'm only going to give it an IP pool of five. There's five IP addresses. So that means only five users could hook up to my system. Okay. Once uh, the sixth person gets in, they can because there's not an IP address to the pool to give out. Press OK. And we're gonna hit next. And no, we don't want the radius thing to be installed. We don't need that. And we're gonna hit uh, next. Hit finish. It gives you a nice little warning. Just uh, press OK on that. To support the relay of DSCP message, the remote access client, you must configure the properties. Yep, I know that. I'm gonna press OK. And it's gonna start routing. And it's gonna start the routing and the remote access. Awesome. So if you guys have been paying attention right there, I had like a nice little red mark, which was not configured. Now I have a green mark, which is good. And it looks like everything is pre-populating. Uh, next thing that you want to do once that's starting, you want to right click, go to properties. And within, within properties, go to security. And with the certificate, make sure that you pick, yeah, you go, a vpn.bj.com or whatever you call it. Click on that, apply, and yes, make the changes. And it will restart Hit yes restarting because you just made changes to the services so it needs to do a restart and that's about it guys hopefully you guys enjoyed this part two of deploying sstp vpn within a server 2012 
please leave comments if you have any questions or if I did something wrong and just leave comments and let me know what I did wrong or what's the best practice in your environment because I'm here to learn as well as you guys are here to learn so let's help each other out please subscribe please give me thumbs up uh, at the bottom of the description part there's a bunch of links that you guys can check out as well as my notes that I take you know screenshots of everything and I leave good notes on that just check those links out and I catch you guys on the next video which is part three of this uh, which is the testing part cool uh, catch you guys later and peace out